but I'm not going to put myself in the position where, number one, where someone might see us and wonder, hmm, what's Pastor Keith doing with so-and-so? I don't need that. I don't need that, I don't need that speculation going on. And I also don't need to put myself in a situation where I might be tempted to, to, to give the devil a foothold. To let, allow something to happen. You know, I, I've told my youth group for years, if, you, if your parents are late coming to pick you up or whatever, I will gladly stay at the church. We will sit out on the front porch where everybody can see us, and I will wait for your mom to come get you. If your mom is not on her way, I will call my wife, and she will come get you, and she can take you home, but I will not get in a car with you by ourselves. Some people say, well, that's such a weird rule. No, it's not. It's a protection. I don't want to give the devil a foothold. I don't want to give him an opportunity to work something in. The passage goes on to say that, say that we should be hardworking. He says, those of you who steal, stop stealing. And work hard for your, you know, labor for what you get. You know, I truly believe that we as Christians should be some of the hardest working employees, some of the best employees of wherever we work. I don't care if you're at Walmart or if you're at a construction worker or if you work at the bank or whatever. If you are a Christian, you should be the best employee they've got. Why? Because the Bible says that we are to work as unto the Lord, as if the Lord is our supervisor and we should be doing the best that we can. That's the heart of the new man, that we are working hard for what we do. We should also, it also says that we should be giving graciously, giving generously. We as Christians have a stigma that I hate. Did you know that Christians are known to be horrible tippers in restaurants? I used to go out to lunch with a, with a, with a pastor friend of mine who he did not believe in tipping. He said, well, why should I give him money when I should give him something more important? And he would give them a card with a Bible verse on it. And I thought, you know what? That waitress is working hard. She's on her feet all day long. And you expect to witness to her by stiffing her and just giving her this card? Yes, the, power, the, the, the word of God is important. But the fact that you've, you haven't given her what she has earned, she's not even going to read it. And so I would wait until he left and I would either take the card and replace it with money or I would just add money to it. Because I thought, you know what? If I have to be the only guy out there, I'm going to change this stigma. We should be giving graciously, shouldn't we? Why? Because we're dependent on God. God's going to provide for us. I can give a $20 tip on a $40 bill. God's going to take care of me. Okay, we should be giving graciously. We shouldn't, it goes on to say that we should not be cursing. We should, not be, we, should, we should understand the words that are coming out of our mouths. We should have a, have a control that no unwholesome speech should ever come out of our mouths because we are represented by what we say. It says that we should, instead we should be encouraging one another. You know, we had a, one of the nights here, our youth group got together and we got in a circle and we began to bless one another. We began to encourage one another and lift them up. And, and, and Melissa, one of, our, one of our youth workers came to me and she said, she said, how do I stop this? <laughs> it's going on forever and ever. It's going to it's gonna go on until tomorrow. And I said, and I said, well, we just have to kind of shorten it down a little bit, but why would, we don't really want to stop it yet. Because we are encouraging one another. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's part of the heart of the new man. It says, be careful not to grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, in that skit we were doing, my sister was embarrassed by me because I was the goofball. It's not too far off reality, maybe a little bit. And my aunt back, is back there going, just a little, just tiny, okay? But you know, it just, I was embarrassing her. You know, I was, I was causing her grief. Are we out there day by day saying, yes, I'm a Christian, and then doing things that, it, it, that causes the Holy Spirit grief? We need to make sure that that's not part of our lives. We need to eliminate bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander and malice. We need to add kindness to others, being tender-hearted and forgiving. That's the heart of a new man. That's the heart of the person who has put on Jesus Christ. What are we supposed to do with Jesus Christ? It says we're supposed to put him on. We're supposed to be clothed by him, and he's supposed to indwell us. The old man has passed away. We have laid him aside, and we have taken on the heart and mind of a new man. So what are we going to do with the old man? It's like a, like a filthy outfit. We take the filthy outfit off, and we throw it away. And we put on the righteousness of God. Imputed righteousness because of Jesus Christ. We put on the new man. We're no longer living our lives for ourselves. We are living our lives for God. Where are you today? The old man, 
the new man. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you're still living in the old man. Well, you say, well, I don't do all those terribly wicked things that you're talking about. Doesn't mean your heart's not hard. Doesn't mean your mind's not futile. Doesn't mean you have a mind of the mind of Christ. You may be the best person who is unsaved that there's ever been, but you're going to go to hell in your sin. Because there's only one way to heaven. That's to put on a new man. To give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. And what about us who, who have put on a new man? We've asked Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. Uh, we've asked him to come into our heart. But we keep having the old man pop up again. And we give room to the old man. It's like picking up that dirty, stinky sock and putting it back on our foot. Why would we do that? But yet we do it consistently. Let's get that old sock off and throw it away again. Because we're new people inside when we know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Let's put on the new man and let's trash the old man. Okay? He's not going to do us any good. He's only going to lead us down the wrong path. He's only going to hurt us in the end. Let's put on the new man that Jesus Christ has designed for every one of us to be. And you may look a little different than the person sitting next to you, but you will be bright and shining if that new man is on. If you have the new man on yourself. Would you bow with me please in prayer? Our Father, we thank you for your presence here this morning. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit and how your Holy Spirit can speak to our hearts. Lord, there may be someone here this morning who has not yet made a decision to receive you as Lord and Savior, who has not yet become a new person in Christ, a new creation in Christ, who has not yet been born again. Father, I pray that they would see the value that they would see the need. Lord, that they would turn over their lives to you today and let you change them. Lord, that they would quit trying to change themselves for the better and just allow you to, to give them a new heart, a heart of flesh, a soft heart, and a new mind, a renewed mind. Father, we thank you for what your Holy Spirit can do in the lives of those who not, do not know you as yet. But Lord, we also pray as Christians, many of us have known you for some time. And yet, in that time, we've allowed more and more of those stinky old rags to be a part of our life. Father, I pray that you would help us to rededicate our lives to be the new person that you've designed us to be, the new creation, the new creature, to have really that born again life evident in our lives. Father, help us to take to heart this passage of scripture and to be changed forever because we've surrendered it all to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you all please stand? God's spoken to your heart this morning. Why don't you come? We'll have some counselors who can talk to you about what God is saying to you this morning.